Welcome to the disturbing media part six. My girlfriend actually helped me film that little like intro skit thingy. Point is, the Disturbing Media series is coming to an end, but it's not going away. I'm simply going to rebrand it into Midnight Frights. There's a few reasons for this. The biggest one is I didn't really feel comfortable calling it an Iceberg series anymore because it's not really an Iceberg series anymore. I know that in the back of my head, everyone watches my Disturbing Iceberg series because they just want me to go over disturbing and creepy stuff over the internet, and I probably deliver it in a way that other creators don't. And that's what the Midnight Fright series is going to be. It's going to be the same exact thing as the Iceberg series minus the Iceberg name, Iceberg chart, and it's just going to be its own thing. It'll be a similar format to the original Iceberg series in that I'm going to be going over a few things every single episode. And seeing as part five was like only nine entries and it was almost an hour long, I'm going to try and stick to around five to nine. Now, none of this really matters. All that really matters to you guys is that instead of seeing this notification or this thumbnail, you guys are going to be seeing this notification and this thumbnail. So when you see Midnight Frights, just think Disturbing Media Series. It's going to be just like Nexpo's Disturbing Things from Around the Internet or Scare Theater's Strange YouTube Video Series. Same exact format, just going to be going over different things every episode. But this is Volume 1. With all that said, let's get into what we're covering in today's video. Today is going to be a light episode for Volume 1. We're just going to be going over the stuff that I did not go over in Part 5. Those things being Vincent Maslowski, WorldCorporal.net, and a few cartel videos. Which I'm not looking forward to covering, but whatever the case... Let's jump into Midnight Frights, Volume 1. Vincent Maslowski was a YouTube channel that was created back in April of 2006, with their first video appearing to be made in December of the same year. A very, very old channel indeed, being created a mere one year after YouTube launched. This channel has a very interesting history to it because it started out as any average YouTube channel, creating what I would think is normal videos. And I say normal videos, meaning like normal for that era of YouTube. But over the years, it slowly devolved into making content that leans more towards towards the disturbing side of things, at least disturbing for the general public. The first video on the channel is a skit called SB5K100, and it's a video where a man gets knocked out and presumably killed, and then the video turns into an infomercial where this man is trying to sell us this stuffed animal invention called the SB5K100. The idea behind this is that it's like an infomercial where this invention is supposed to stop potential threats and that's why the guy in the beginning got killed because he didn't have this stuffed animal. In fact, the very next scene demonstrates this exactly. The stuffed animal completely eviscerates someone into basically nothing. Now I'd say this is a pretty normal video considering it was made back in 2006 and a lot of what was uploaded back in the day was just very badly acted skits just like this one. The next 10 or so videos were uploaded within the next four years and appear to be very simple college projects. At least that's what is said in the description of each one. And I will say the fact that the videos have almost no views, no comments, and no preview feature make them very unsettling to watch. Now, none of them are crazy. You guys have seen in the Disturbing Media series, a lot of crazy stuff happens in a lot of these videos. This one's on the more tame side of things, but just because when you're watching this, the general atmosphere and vibe kind of goes down, I would say it's pretty off-putting at the very least. And almost every single one has very weird moments such as this one. But I'm like 99% certain that almost all of these were just film school projects that were made with the intention of creating a portfolio of some sort. My personal favorite project being the video titled V11435, which depicts a dystopian type of world where people are given almost barcode-esque type names. When the video starts, a man is smoking outside and appears to be stuck in what appears to be the city's boundaries, which are indicated by these humongous stone-like pillars. Then we cut to this man on a computer screen yells at this individual to get back to work, calling him by his name, V11435. This prompts the man to leave his work area, and then the rest of the video is this person sorting through the documents of other people being punished, and then a strange message appears on his desk, stating, self-disciplining message start subject v11435 
which is the man working this area. This is where the dystopia part hits. He is instructed to speak a message that isn't shown to the viewer into his microphone. And right when he opens his mouth, we are shown a person being yelled at to stop smoking, indicating that V11435 is the one yelling at this man, much like he got yelled at in the beginning. Here's the scene in its entirety for you guys to digest what I just said. I actually thought this is really cool. This video actually touched on a lot of world building aspects for like dystopian type worlds with this one being centered around people being forced to do jobs. They don't even know what they're actually doing. For example, the guy talks into this computer mic and he doesn't know who he's talking to. And at the beginning of the video, he was talked to by presumably somebody else doing the same exact task. That's who asked him to stop smoking. Probably just some random person also being instructed to say things into a random microphone. Now, to be completely honest, I couldn't make sense of the rest of the video. It ends with V11435 in this white location that reminds me of this scene from SpongeBob, if you guys remember that, with the video ending with a stare off between this skeleton head and the main character. Now, I know none of this is disturbing, but I felt the need to explain this channel's first videos because one, I think his other videos deserve a lot of attention, and two, I think it's important to know how the channel started because when you guys see what they're making now it'll just add to the overall oddity and mystery of the channel i believe the turning point for vincent maslowski's channel was around the time that this video was posted a collection of nice animations from here the channel would dive heavily into very weird and somewhat disturbing animations i think on some level these have a almost jack stauber like feel to them but let's be honest Jack Stauber is really the only person that can do what Jack Stauber does. However, I don't think we should just dismiss this channel as a creepy animation channel because there are a ton of other videos on the channel that are at least worth looking at, such as these videos that I found disturbing from a more obvious visual perspective. One of them being a short film called The Wonderfuls, which takes you on the journey that is friendship. This video takes place in a very creepy room that has blood splattered all throughout with very eerie looking people and every single person having these very creepy masks on, which I think might be a metaphor for people masking themselves and being different around their friends, but you guys get the point. A lot of the stuff on here is kind of artsy and used disturbing imagery to get the point across. Also the jump cut style video and overall atmosphere did creep me out upon first viewing, but that's mostly because I'm just a huge weenie, which a lot of you might be surprised to find out because of the content that I produce on my channel. I'd say that although it didn't start out as disturbing, Vincent Maslowski's channel definitely delved into the more disturbing side of things as time went on. But in my truest opinion, I really do believe that what's being put out now on the channel is meant to thought provoke and make conversations with some higher meaning put behind them. Especially the newer animations and specifically the Wiggle Room series that he's made from two years ago to now. It's clear that Vincent Maslowski is the type of person to at least put some effort into what he produces, even if it may not have the best acting in it. So while some of the content is disturbing, I view this channel in the same vein as Treats for Beasts. Meaning that some viewers might find the content disturbing, but I would say a good vast majority of people will be able to see the value in the content that's being created. Worldcorpo.net Is it an ARG? Does it have confirmed CP? What is Worldcorpo.net? To answer all of these, we have to start at the very beginning of World Corpo's internet presence. I believe the first time this website garnered any type of attention was when Mudahar discovered the website as part of his deep web browsing series. And since Mudahar put this video out, there's been a few videos on the subject, with its most famous internet controversy being the Dreamer Heaven incident, which I covered in my last video. However, what I did not mention in my last video was that the Dreamer Heaven incident was only one of a few videos of similar content on worldcorpo.net. There were two other videos, one titled Fatherhood Part 2 and another titled Each Day I Grow Some More. Both of these videos feature the same type of content. Let's talk about the first one, 
Fatherhood Part 2. This one starts with a title card that says Fatherhood Part 2 and promptly skips to a countdown of some sort, then we get to the actual meat of the video. Because of the possibility of this having CP in it, I won't be showing anything from the video, but trust me, you aren't losing out on much. In the video, there appears to be an adult man present and a little kid in what appears to be a shower. The man is constantly yelling at the kid, gets in the water, gets in the water. To which the child responds by crying, sobbing, and just begging to be let out. What is really disheartening about this video, aside from what has already been said, is that people think the kid is being burned by scolding hot water. The speculation for this theory comes from the fact the guy is yelling at the kid to get in the water constantly, and also the fact that at the end of the video, he says the phrase, admit you did it or I'll burn you again. I will say that that last part, admit it or I'll burn you again, wasn't exactly stated in the video. Like when I watched it myself, I couldn't get that from hearing it, but going into it, wanting to hear that i guess i could hear the guy saying it but i don't know if it's one of those like brain illusions where i'm just hearing what i want to hear basically it's just unclear what the guy is actually saying at the end of the video nonetheless though it is a horrible video and i do not recommend watching it but that is just the first one and i can't stress enough if these videos are fake someone needs to hire this child actor because everything in this video sounds extremely real the crying the uncontrollable shakiness in the kid's voice I just don't think it's possible to garner a reaction like this from a child unless you were actually doing some heinous acts to him. And the second video is much of the same. This one is titled Each Day I Grow Some More. Beginning with an older man angrily screaming the Caillou theme song at a child that is screaming bloody murder. It appears that the kid is behind some type of translucent glass, but some people have theorized that it's not actually glass, it's just one of those weird shower wall things that keep you from getting the bathroom wet. This is actually a very important detail because people think that fatherhood part two and this video are the same child getting tortured and the translucent glass is simply another perspective from which the other video is taken from. With the reason the kid crying and screaming being the fact that he is also being burned with hot water like in fatherhood part two. The entire video only lasts around 40 seconds and at least from what I saw it is very hard to stomach. The screaming sounds so real to that of what an actual child would probably do in this situation and you can even hear in the video the kid says multiple times, I'm just a kid. And I know it's so easy for us to look at this like these topics and like talk about them and I know I'm presenting it in a very like nonchalant manner but when I'm watching these videos it kind of gets to me. It's really hard to watch this stuff and to think about the fact that someone out there in the world is making this type of content for people. Now, if you made it to here, then congratulate yourself because that's all we're gonna be doing when it comes to covering, talking about child exploitation type of films. So all these videos, the Dreamer Heaven video, Fatherhood Part 2, and Each Day I Grow Some More were all available on the World Corpo website. And they were available for quite some time on the clear net, meaning that you didn't need any web browser like Tor to view this. You could just hop onto any old computer, type in worldcorpo.net and boom you'd be able to see these videos without any issue. Now there's a few theories surrounding the enigma that is worldcorpo.net, so let's talk about the first and most popular theory. The John Podesta slash shock site theory. One of the more popular theories regarding this website also involves another conspiracy known as Pizzagate. Pizzagate, for those uninformed, is a conspiracy theory that stems from emails from John Podesta that were leaked through WikiLeaks, and based on what some of the emails said, people believed that it linked John Podesta to a <laughs> and <laughs> ring. The reason it's linked to World Corpo though is because people think the voice in the video, the person and the adult that is screaming at the kid, is John Podesta. People have compared John Podesta's voice to the guy in these videos, and they genuinely believe that it's the same exact person. I personally don't hear it, but that's just me. And because people think that John Podesta is the guy in these videos, and he's also linked to Pizzagate, they think that these videos, Fatherhood Part 2, Dreamer Heaven, and Each Day I Grow Some More, are actual confirmed CP, with all of them being evidence of Podesta's actions. And as for how they ended up on the internet, people think that these videos were leaked from Podesta's emails about the entire Pizzagate scandal. What I'm about to say doesn't directly prove anything, but it does check out story-wise. Like if you were to believe this entire narrative, all of this and everything before, it does make sense. So the creators of World Corpo, or people involved in the Discord, have explained that the videos weren't made by anyone in the World Corp group. 
and that most of them were taken off of 4chan and put onto their website. This checks out because every other video besides these three are very popular videos that you can see on LiveLeak, 4chan, or any type of very gore infested website. So it's entirely possible that the World Corp creators simply thought that taking shock and gore videos like this would garner their website a ton of attention, with the main reason of them wanting more attention to boost the audience of their music. And yeah, the, this entire scandal, the possible CP, the link to Pizzagate, the shocking content, every single part of it was just to promote their SoundCloud music. And in my last video regarding this, I made the mistake of saying this. But what's the motive? Like, why make such a fucked up and truly disturbing video to promote your shitty SoundCloud music? Because to be honest, when I made the part five video and when I first talked about worldcorpo.net on the disturbing website iceberg, I didn't really listen to anything on the website. I only listened to like a few songs. And after listening to every single song this time around, I hate to admit it, but it kind of slaps. Every minute of the day, buy and sell, buy and sell. The only people calling my phone are the clientele. What the fuck, what in Sam hell, what the heck? Heard a couple slaps, now he's laying on the deck. I could be the only one left, and you still find me at the bank. Cash in the check, it's hard to affect. Got big name shareholder, jot his name down in the corporate affair folder. In an effort to promote their music, they added all types of weird vaporwave and scary content in order to cause shock amongst those that came to the website in hopes that they would spread it like wildfire. And in that regard, it kind of worked if you really think about it because this song, one of their most popular songs on the website, has over 100,000 views nowadays because of the fact that they put all of this weird gory content onto their website. The other theory was that the entire group was lying about their link to these videos and that they were in fact the ones that created them. There was a ton of contradictory evidence surrounding the videos on the website, and I covered one main piece of evidence in my last video, which was this post from a Redditor explaining that it was just the creator's brother that did it. I'm not gonna lie, when I read this explanation that it was just the brother that made these videos, I kind of brushed it off. I was like, okay, problem solved. Even if it's not CP, that just means that his brother made these videos. But then I kind of thought about it when I was making this video, and I was like, well, hold up. That's still fucked up because if you think about it, right, like that means the brother was actually doing this and what you're seeing in the videos are in fact real reactions from the little brother. So if the brother theory is true, these are all genuine and real reactions to physical and emotional trauma from supposedly this guy's little brother, which would mean the begging and the screams from the child are in fact very, very real. This theory is supported by the fact that the entire Ward Corp website is no longer around and one of the supposed creators of it, called Money Goblin, decided it was too risky to keep the website going and cut the entirety of the website in order to stop an ongoing investigation from happening. People have linked Money Goblin specifically because of his involvement with another music group known as Autistic Boys Money Clan. Just listen to these side by side. It's hard to affect that big name shareholder. Jot his name down in the corporate affair folder. Make the somewhat similar, but that appears to be the only link having similar voices. Now there are a few on the internet that have claimed that they actually do have definitive proof for the link between Money Goblin and WorldCorp.net, but whenever they are asked to prove it or question further about it, they always say that they can't find the proof for some reason, leading me to believe that it's just people wanting attention. So what do I think happened? I personally think that World Corp was just one single person. In fact, I think it was just a single rap artist that wanted fame and attention just like every other person that aspires to be a rapper. And when he saw that his YouTube channel wasn't getting the success that he wanted, he tried to be edgy by making his company's entire identity this mysterious enigma with weird vaporwave religious imagery and shock videos in order to spark attention to his music. I don't even think that World Corp had a direct connection to any of these videos. I truly believe that it was one guy that saw the failure that was his rap videos and rap music and immediately took action by going to 4chan, Reddit, LiveLeak, and just getting the worst possible videos he could find and throwing them onto his website in the hopes that people would shove it and send it to their friends and be like, look at this crazy content. And then maybe, just maybe, they would click on that tiny music tab in the corner. What's crazy though is that based on the actual music and the positive response that it's had over the last few years, 
I genuinely think that the creator could have realistically grinded super hard and became a much more respected and possibly even famous artist off of their music because people in the comments are even comparing it to the likes of MF Doom, which is an absolute legend in the hip hop scene. And I can honestly say I see the similarities in the music as well, even if it's not directly on par with what MF Doom has created. So yeah, that's my personal take on WarCorp.net. It was a hopeless dream to become a rap artist turned edgy, weird shock site in the hopes that maybe somebody would like their music. And as I said before, I, it kind of worked. If you guys look at any of the music that's out right now, any of the songs that World Corp has produced, a lot of them are getting a lot of attention and a lot of them have a lot of positive feedback because of how good it is. Like, just think about that. How good does your song have to be for people to look past the fact that it might be linked to very, very bad content? That's crazy. And I feel like if this guy were to come back, like if, if somehow you're watching this video, I think if I think you out there, whoever created World Corp, whoever made these, these songs and whatever, I genuinely think in my heart of hearts that if you came back, explained everything and just told everyone what was going on, everyone would probably be more than happy to listen to whatever you have to make because some of this music is stuff that I've been blasting in my car every other day because I think it's genuinely good. This will move us onto two well-known cartel videos. I will be giving as much detail as I think I can get away with when talking about these topics. So if you don't think you can stomach anything with gore, execution, dismemberment, torture, or hearing any detailed description of those, then I'd suggest leaving this video now. I'll leave a link to a playlist below of more lighthearted content videos that I've made in the past so that you can all get an actual good night's rest. Because I know how easy it is to scare yourself into staying awake when watching anything regarding this type of disturbing content. With that said, let's get into the first one, which is probably the most infamous cartel video. Funky Town, otherwise known as Funky Town Gore, made its first appearance on the internet on a website known as Chaotic. Chaotic being a site similar to Live Leak or Best Gore. This video was highly regarded as the worst possible video you can get your hands on and that you can see anywhere in the world on the clear net. And that line right there might already get me a bunch of comments saying like, I've seen worse, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, Disturbing Media Part 5, it's not cool to brag about the craziest video you've watched. It's okay to admit that some of these videos are horrible and bad to watch because they are. Like these are very horrible videos and just because you are desensitized to it doesn't mean that everyone else is. I think this is one of the absolute worst videos you can get your hands on. And like the Russian brick incident, the audio only makes it so much worse. When the video starts out, we are shown a grown man on the ground completely bloodied up with his entire face flayed off. If somehow you don't know what flaying is, here is a visual representation from one of my personal favorite shows, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Spoilers, by the way. I know you're in pain, but... Bored now. Yeah, so his entire face from the very get-go of the video is just gone. And he also has his arms tied up. Notice how I specified arms and not hands. This is because when the video starts off, he also has both of his hands completely amputated from the wrists. So to recap, he has no face, no hands, and is tied up. All of that within the first 10 seconds of the video. And it somehow gets way worse the longer you watch. The guys torturing this guy then take a sickle and just start whacking it against the guy's face over and over again. With the people in the video constantly yelling in Spanish to shut the guy up before he starts screaming. This prompts someone to take what I imagine is a very dull box cutter and just repeatedly slice his neck over and over. It's extremely gruesome and keep in mind this entire time that the guy is alive and conscious. You can clearly hear him gasping for air and breathing, not to mention him start screaming later in the video. It's speculated that during the video, he is also being injected with a ton of adrenaline or some type of chemical that is keeping him awake during this entire process. However, none of that has actually been confirmed. The only reason people think that is because there is this very weird, almost IV-like tube being run across the guy's body. So people think that it has to be some type of chemical keeping him alive, which I wouldn't put past this group of people because this is already absolutely brutal. 
But like many of the details surrounding this video, nothing is set in stone. That's basically all that happens for the rest of the video. And from a purely gore standpoint, it is truly one of the worst things you can watch. It's disturbing, not just because of the gruesome nature, but also because of the origin of the name of the video. During the last 20 seconds or so of the video, this guy is just completely begging for his life and you can't even recognize what you're looking at as human anymore. All the while that this is happening, you can hear Funky Town by Limps Inc. blasting in the background. You're watching this guy in his last moments, struggling to die in peace, while these guys are putting him through this pain and treating it like it's just any other day. And it's because it is just another day for these guys. They're listening to the radio casually as if it's just a Tuesday for them. And that's what makes these types of videos very disturbing. It demonstrates how desensitized humans can become when they're exposed to a ton of situations like this. Besides what's in the video, what's the backstory behind it? Because there obviously has to be some kind of context as to why this is happening to this guy in the video. And everyone watching at home, you all know that I love doing my due diligence and giving a proper explanation to these types of videos, but I swear, man, it, there's no clear answer to what is actually going on in this video. No one knows who this guy is or who the group of people doing it to him are. It's rumored to be some cartel members in the video doing these actions to the guy. And the only reason for that is because of some of the dialogue and the accent that people have translated from the Spanish speakers in the video. For example, one of the lines that's stated and clearly said is he is from the other side, indicating some sort of gang or rivalry, which is common amongst various cartel groups. But it's not known what group sparked this entire thing to happen, and if the victim is even a part of any of these groups. Others have theorized that it's not even general cartel rivalry activity. And in fact, this guy actually died because he was some type of mole or person feeding intel to another group of some sort. This is because people have interpreted the line, he is from the other side, to indicate that he's some type of mole, thus making him a huge target once he's found out. These are all just speculation though, and that's what actually added to the overall hype of this video. It's been nearly six years since this video came out on the internet, and not a single person has been able to provide any concrete proof on who the victim is and who the group doing this torture activity to him are. All I know is it's messed up and I heavily advise you guys to not look for it. As with a lot of the stuff that I go over, it's all easily findable if you dig enough on Google and Reddit, but I tell you guys, it's just not worth objecting yourself to this type of content for three minutes. I really advise against it, but if you guys really want to, go look for it. You guys will be able to find it without really any issues at all. But don't say that I didn't warn you because it's really hard to watch if you haven't actually seen anything like it before. The Guerrero Flaying, probably one of the most gruesome and worst videos on the internet. It originally came out or at least gained notoriety around January of 2018. The video has two famous names that people refer to it as. There is the name No Mercy in Mexico or the one that I believe is more notable, the Guerrero Flaying. Both of these are the same exact video. In this video, it features two men, one older gentleman and a younger person that looks like a child but is apparently older than we have been led to believe. There is a ton of misinformation and gray area surrounding who these people are and why exactly they're being tortured. Some believe they are father and son, while others think it's uncle and nephew. Based on the resources that I was able to find, it does appear that the older man is the dad and that the younger person is the son of the man. But as I said before, these are just speculations, so believe what you want. I personally think it's father and son. As far as what actually happens in the video, it's nothing short of scarring. Both men are bound by their hands, shirtless, lying in a ditch. The son is then forced to watch his father be beaten to death by a huge tree branch or stick of some sort. And the entire time, the man is kind of just taking it as it comes. He does flail a bit here and there, but it appears throughout the entire video that he's kind of just accepted the fact that this is going to happen to him and gives very little resistance throughout the entire ordeal. Or he could have just simply froze because I have no idea what I would do in that situation either. The entire time that the dad is being beat, the captors are forcing the son to watch by holding his head and yelling at him to keep his eyes open. All of a sudden, another person comes into frame with what appears to be a small knife and begins beating the father. As said before, the dad also has no resistance to this at all and kind of just lets it happen to him. 
But what makes this truly horrifying to watch is the fact that you can hear the son scream for help as he's watching his dad next to him just completely being gutted. I know some of you watching out there might have a terrible relationship with your parents, but ugh, dude, if this happened to my dad, like that's crazy. Like, I have no idea what this guy would even be thinking. Like imagine you're sitting next to your dad and you're seeing this happen to him. I, I have no idea how I'd even react to that. And I just, it, hearing the screams and everything that happened in the video, it's really hard to watch. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been thinking about it like every other day since I've watched the video myself. It's very haunting. And to those of you out there that aren't affected by it or have any like, I guess, feeling when it comes to that kind of stuff, props to you, but I, you're a stronger man than I. I don't even know what to do. And I'm not even the one in the video, the kid is. And I simply just can't imagine what must be going through his head as he's being forced to watch all of this go down. And this is the better part of the video. It gets way worse as you watch it. The dad got off very easy compared to what you see the son go through, which makes no sense in hindsight because the dad, at least from a more contextual standpoint, based on the story that I've been told multiple times, it appears the dad is the person that caused all this to happen. And the son is kind of an innocent bystander to the entire thing, but they don't give up fuck so after the father's death the kid obviously tries to get away he starts crawling and trying to make his way out of the situation which only prompts his captors to get more angry at him as this is happening you can hear the captors in the background screaming stuff like this is what happens to you when you play games with us in other words don't fuck with us unless you want to end up like this guy the video then cuts and the captors are telling the kid to get ready for what's about to happen and man like straight up mortal combat fatality type stuff i know it's like funny in hindsight to say that sentence but like it's it's exactly what happens like what you see in the video is exactly what i would think a mortal combat fatality would be they flay the skin off of his chest and they cut a hole directly in the middle of his body like literally just poof, like directly in the middle of his body and they reach their hand in and they grab his still beating heart out and they hold it up to the camera crazy and the entire time this is happening the entire time you're seeing this entire thing go down it's not fast it's not as fast and easy as you would think it would be it's a very long process like almost a minute long of you seeing this kid being subjected to this and all the while he's just screaming and begging for help like i don't even know what you would do in that situation like you just got to accept it at that point and it's really hard to watch and to those that have watched it and are going to comment that it's it's not even that bad like i don't know who is believing you dude because this is one of the worst videos out there it's so brutal what happened to the kid and to make matters even worse than they already are you can hear the guys in the video say at some point that they're gonna send the heads of these people to their mother just goes to show how terrifying messing with these groups can be to be quite honest though i only feel really bad for the kid in this situation based on what is said in the video and what i found it appears that the kid really did have nothing to do with what happened at all the story goes that the father was a policeman for the Guerrero Guard, and his son is also rumored to be in the same group. The Guerrero Guard, from my understanding, was a group formed by police that ran protection for cartels in the Guerrero area. And the cartel group in this video that is doing the flaying is known as the Los Viagras. This is assumed because of the language spoken in the video and how dominant that group was in the region this video was filmed in. And somehow being affiliated with the Guerrero Guards meant they were backstabbing the Los Viagras, which prompted the Viagras to kidnap these two individuals and use them as a lesson for anyone that dare backstab them or rat on them. I really don't know how rivalries or the cartel work over there, and I'm not going to pretend like I do. All that information is stuff that I constantly saw brought up in every source, from random news articles around the internet to Redditors claiming that they know exactly what happened. It's really hard to get actual answers on these types of topics, though, because you have to have a journalist that is willing to get to the bottom of the truth, and that's super rare because it means exposing yourself to this type of violence and putting a target on your back. So it's in most journalists' best interest to stray away from the truth when it comes to situations like this that could potentially get themselves killed or at least hurt in some way. The only concrete answer we have is this news article from BriaBart.com. Probably misread that, but that's 
what I thought it sounded like. This states that the execution took place in a ranch near Acapulco and that the rival gangs were the Los Viagras cartel and the Los Zetas cartel and that these two individuals are simply villagers in the area and the reason people believe they are tied to the Guerrero guards is due to the dialogue in the video that suggests the older man is a traitor of some sort and due to the Guerrero guard and the Los Viagras having tension at the time people just assume that information. All of this is just speculation and with many of these videos people are just too scared to get to the bottom of it whether it's out of fear of maybe putting a target on their back like i was saying earlier or just not wanting to find more stuff like this it was really hard to research all of this but hopefully i've laid out basically all the information i found and made it up somewhat clear for you to be able to make a decision on what you want to believe i personally choose to believe the policeman and son story because it's just the one that makes the most sense to me and also the fact that it gives an entire other layer to the disturbing side of things when you consider the, the psychological impact of seeing your dad die right in front of your eyes. And that will end Midnight Frights Volume 1. Let me know what you guys think of the intro and the overall format. It's basically the same thing as the Disturbing Media Iceberg series. It's just that I'm not going to be layering everything or trying to like rank everything like I did before. It's just going to be a bunch of random stuff from the internet that I find or maybe you guys even comment in the videos. If you guys want early access to any Midnight Frights in the future or any of my Iceberg videos, go subscribe to me on Patreon. We have three tiers with the second tier giving everybody one day early access to all the Midnight Frights volumes in the future and all the Icebreak videos. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, go ahead and head on over there. But I will be making weekly community posts regarding that every time I'm going to release a video. I also just want to say thank you guys because like you guys are making this a lot. You guys are making this whole transition like so much easier. I know coming back was kind of a hard thing, but it's been so wonderful. Like seeing the videos that I'm making already doing well like they used to, it's been super encouraging and I just couldn't have asked for a better community. So thank you guys. I love every single one of you. And with all of that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.